Hey Barbara, how are you today? Very good. Thanks for having me over for coffee. No problem. Um, you know, today is Kate's very last day at high school for the yes. year. It's going to be an interesting summer having her home all mm -hmm. summer. Be different. How's it gone this year for being in school? Really good. It's been good. And um, I don't know if you know, but she, because of her disability, she's able to stay in high school until she's 21. So that they're able to help with some of the support. Amazing. Mm -hmm. That would have been a big transition for you after having her home all those years. And 13 years. Wow. I know. And That's a long time. Good. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah. you're a good example, I think, of doing that, of persevering through all those years mm -hmm. of homeschooling with special needs and coming through the other side, still smiling. I know. And I mean, it's so important that moms be encouraged that just persevere one day at a time with their special needs kids. Mm -hmm. Just keep pushing through. That's right, because I think homeschooling is always mm -hmm. a long journey. It's lots of work. But I think with special needs or struggling learners, you very quickly find it's two steps forward, at least one, one step two back. back. <laughs> maybe very maybe true. one step yeah. forward, three back. Yeah, yeah just that true. inconsistent yeah. behavior, right, or mm -hmm. performance. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well, I totally understand the stress and the busyness that moms face with home, like homeschooling a child with special needs. But when I first started homeschooling, I thought, well, this is a really great option for my mm -hmm. oldest son and daughter. But as time went on, we discovered that Kate had not only a physical disability, but an intellectual disability, a mild, mild intellectual disability. It became very clear that homeschooling was going to be the very best choice for us. And I think that's important to remember because you look at what you're doing at mm -hmm. home and you think, oh, maybe I should send them where there's experts or more, more resources. But having them at home really is a great advantage. Mm -hmm. You know, No matter what their issues are, what their struggles are, you can meet those needs at home. Mm -hmm. Usually quicker, easier, better at home than in the oh, classroom. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And I mean, a lot of our time was spent, you know, in doing therapy or having appointments and whatnot. But I mean, I found the most difficult thing was trying to modify and adapt some of the curricula mm -hmm. that, I, that was available out there. But through it all, Kate has done so well and she's so much more advanced than so many of the kids in high school today. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I think that's a really important point. It's you put out the money for mm -hmm. the new books and the new flashy, your resources and you think we need to go front to back, cover mm -hmm. to cover, but that's not going to help all your kids, right? I think even in my house, you look at certain kids with the different learning mm -hmm. styles to be able to say, this isn't going to work for this child mm -hmm. and then change it on the fly is really important. Whether that means Absolutely. making this one book take two years or scrapping the book entirely, mm -hmm. you have to give yourself the freedom and permission to do that so that your kid can get the individualized learning they need. Yeah. It's all about setting short term goals. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of the time. You know, today we're going to complete a math activity. It may take us half an hour. Totally. But if that's what we complete that day, that's what we complete that day. I think that's right. And giving them time to do that. I know one of the things I've appreciated most about homeschooling um, the kids that we have that have some struggles with school is mm -hmm. giving them that freedom to say, day is not a good day. And so today we need a lot more time of just sitting on the couch and reading a book, yeah. maybe talking yeah. through a bad attitude or a hard feeling, mm -hmm. and then coming back tomorrow when maybe their energy levels are higher or That's mine right. are, That's and we can hit it again instead Absolutely. of them being in a classroom feeling like they failed and they have no one to talk yeah. to. Yeah, and I think homeschooling creates that more relaxing environment mm -hmm. and that they find learning more fun, That's more right. enjoyable, and they're able to just take it one step at a time. I think that's right. Yeah. You know, even though I'm a, a retired homeschool mom, I just am so encouraged talking with you today. It just reminds me of how beneficial homeschooling was for not only my family, mm -hmm. but so many of the families out there that have children with special needs. Mm -hmm. I just, I just firmly believe that. Well, I think that's my desire is to encourage mm -hmm. moms in homeschooling, especially with struggling learners and special needs, because you've done it, mm -hmm. you've got through all the years, you're seeing the fruits of your labor and you survived. Yes. And it wasn't just like <laughs> hanging on survive. for dear life, like you're yeah. thriving, Katie's yeah. doing great. And I think I'm still in the thick of it. And so the two of us know the benefit of it. And I just want homeschooling moms to know yes. it's worth it. Don't quit doing it. And, and to just take one more step, mm -hmm. one more step, mm -hmm. one more step. And then all of a sudden you're a retired homeschooler with a successful daughter. Yeah. And I think this is really important for moms mm -hmm. to hold on to that you've made a good decision, just to keep going. Yeah, absolutely. And we need to do this again someday. We should definitely do this more often. Awesome. <laughs>